welcome to this CodeBuddies.org live code hangout. By joining or scheduling a hangout, you can ask questions, work through tutorials, share ideas, or a pair program on open source projects. Today we're going to continue working on our sustainable urban design app. We uh, have a few issues in the backlog. It looks like Max has been working in the, the past few hours on kind of a little bug where we left off with the localization widget. Uh, I'm going to actually make a couple of improvements to the recent feature for the design library, design patterns library. I don't think we have an issue open for this, but we did close uh, sustainable urban design pattern library with a couple of ideas kind of floating out there. So what I'll do is I'll just uh, we, we didn't do photographs or geographic examples, uh, so today I'm just going to try to add the photographs. We might keep this session pretty short. Um, if things go well, there's clear documentation on, on how to add these photographic examples. So, uh, In other words, Wagtail has a tutorial showing how to attach photographs to content, like blog articles, and we'll follow that. So let me just create a new issue, and I'll say, stemmed, you know, from... Uh, Issue three. So it's an enhancement and sort of slipping it in to the backlog. We're not following any particular um, methodology or sprint cycle, but we're trying to keep, we're trying to make a tangible release, keep the release small and get feedback. Uh, so the more issues we sort of wedge into this milestone, the less likely uh, it is for the launch to, uh, well, yeah, to get feedback and to even happen. I've been on previous, um, open source projects where like a bunch of features just got jammed into a release and just things kept piling up into the release and we, it took over a year to make uh, the release you know the project ended up uh, kind of sputtering out anyway so just learning from that lesson I just release early release often we don't have a release yet we haven't deployed this app so let's get on the road with it okay hey Max welcome good to see you I noticed you were working on that uh, localization task with the middleware. So if you want to do some pair programming, I can help on that. If if all it was was an issue with middleware, then hopefully that's a an easy win. I can review your pull request and get it merged in. You got it working? Great. Let's check let's take a look at your pull request real quick. I, I was just looking at it. It's still marked as draft. Uh, go ahead and push your commits. I'm just gonna get a little bit of green tea because I think we can go for about an hour tonight, maybe two hours. So I'll just start a fresh pot of tea. Okay, ah, okay, so yeah, I'll take a look at the code in one moment. I'll just be right back. It takes two minutes to brew the water, or it takes a couple minutes to brew the water and a couple minutes to uh, steep the tea.
Okay, I got the water boiling. It's going to take just a little bit. It's not going to actually come to a boil, but it'll get to about 70 degrees. Sometimes I'll even do cold brew with the not green tea. And it's pretty, uh, pretty tasty. It just takes a little bit longer. So, oh yeah, I just noticed uh, it was a language name. I asked in Slack about it. Okay. For the, uh, for the German, D. Ah, ha, ha. The Chinese, we were thinking about that. We were like, oh, Z.H. Hans. Hey, there's a gas man. Gasman's really good. He's the core developer for Wagtail. Oh, and this is a Wagtail issue, isn't it? You opened the issue. Oh, okay, I see. Uh, let me get the context here. Here, sorry, I'll open this one on stream. This is a pretty cool, Max. Um, you were able to get an answer for that. Let's see, you opened it. It's viewed 23 times. You opened it four hours ago. And... Sort of got some answers within an hour. That's pretty timely. This man, Gasman, has been so supportive uh, many times. He's the core developer for Wagtail and just has helped me out so many times. Okay, so. Oh, and this was a Wagtail specific issue. All right. Very cool. All right, uh, so yeah, mark this. Uh, your changes are pushed. Mark it as ready for review. I'll get it merged in, and then I'll create a, a branch off of yours. And if you want a pair program today, you can join my pair programming session, and we'll do a little bit of wagtail work, if that sounds reasonable. Because the last couple of times, I've you've been the kind of coding the pilot, and I'll be and I've been the navigator. But this time, I'll be the coder, and you can be the navigator. Um, but I'll just be right back. Let me get my tea ready. <laughs> Okay, it's Sencha tea, so I don't want to steep it too long, but two minutes. Uh, and I always forget, I always get carried away. So we've got one commit, and, oops, actually I just wanted to see the files changed. All right, so literally just moving the middleware, uh, did that seem to fix it? Or, where did, where's the commit with the, uh, um, language name, I'm sorry. Did you have to do... Did you have to make a change to the template or the locale file? We should be um, committing these locale files if we're not already. The PO files should be kept in version control, I think. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, no worries, no rush. I'm just keeping an eye on the clock so I don't uh, infuse my tea too long. I've tried this little 
tea timer reminder thing. I always forget to set it. And I've used my phone sometimes, but I always forget to just set my phone alarm. Particularly with black teas, uh, and then they'll get pretty strong after a little bit. <clears throat> There's a K tea time. A widget for KDE. Try it out. There's one bad review, but apparently they downloaded a snap version of it. But this one I found here is I'll just show you real quick. Or uh, it's part of the Ubuntu packaging, the universe. So and it just has a little widget down there. Woo hee! -hoo. See this is what I'm saying? I'm getting sidetracked. Here's my super secret secure password. Uh, where did you push? Do you have another remote setup? Okay, let's take a look. Now I can refresh. And the tea is ready, so I'll be right back. All right, drinking an Autumn Harvest Sencha. It's not the most expensive one, and man, it's just, the aroma is so inviting. Okay, so it looks like we got some changes to the dependencies here. And so did you do a Wagtail 2.9 upgrade in this PR as well? Because I think the 2.9 has now export for um, CSB and XLSX. That's my guess here. Okay. That's cool. Oh, I'm sorry, it's right here. Uh, maybe I didn't pip freeze it or something. But so I'm just wondering how these dependencies got changed. Anyway, looks good. All right, so we needed the middleware, and then we needed this. Uh, so yeah, and totally the middleware is what's going to intercept all the requests and then localize them, I guess. Hmm. Something like that. Okay, cool. And then, how can we switch to single quotes here? Not a big deal, but generally, if there's already one style of quotes in a file, just stick with that style, even if it's, uh, is that something Black did, or? No, Black would have done the whole, whole file. Anyway, not a big deal. Uh, we do have some trailing white space. Again, this is linting stuff, and pr try to lint your templates. I know these Django templates are a little bit harder. That way, um, uh, code reviewers don't have to nag you about this little stuff, like single durable quotes or white space. It's not enough to block a pull request. So I'm just checking it out. Uh, this is getting a little bit difficult to read, though. You can see that it's um, this is an example of why an 80 character limit word wrap is useful in practice. And it's not just some antiquated thing, but even just rendering in GitHub, the pull request review interface shows, in, shows it side by side by default. And there's roughly 100 characters or so. Uh, so, I don't know, it's wrapping it. So we got language code, just unnecessary white space. And when you have lines that are that long, you can just use line breaks. But anyway, again, this is not stuff that's uh, worth blocking, blocking over. So let's do it, let's merge this. Rebase and merge. And get some tea. Excellent. Okay, we'll 
clean up that old branch and I will pull your changes locally. So I'll give you some updates there. And mark that as the answer. If you can mark your own um, answer as the answer, I think you should be able to, like, say, answer my own question, something like that. Cool. All right. So, do you want to join my live coding session? I'll get a link and I'll share it with you. Okay, and it does that in a secretive way anyway. And if you want, in the live code, I can leave this chat up. I just have kind of a limited um, workspace here. But at least this chat on the live share, live coding session, is going to be a little bit quicker than, and more convenient than the Twitch chat. So um, certainly use that if you want Max. Let me just send you the link. All right, cool. Yeah, you can do whatever is convenient for you. And if you ever want to join on voice, that's cool. Um, for example, my, my friend John and I did the voice chat. If I squeeze it, squeeze it, squeeze it, then it should be good to go. And I wonder actually if I can bring this chat. It's not like Blender or something where you can just drag these tabs to arbitrary position, huh? That'd be cool to have like the little chat down here or something. All right. Maybe there's a little chat notification that'll pop up and I can just toggle the chat. Nope. Yeah, I don't know. All right, so are you joining? Let me check here. I'll, I'll refresh master. Oh, there you go. Joined collaboration session. Looks like I got your changes. Uh, so we're going to kind of do a little low-hanging fruit issue here. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I forgot when you uh, create a pull request, always tag the re related issue. Um, that it closes. Let me just double check. I'm not sure if you actually you didn't do this one, so maybe maybe you already did. Yeah, yeah, I think you did, in fact, yeah. Just double check. Yep, you did fine. Okay, so the other one's a bonus feature. Good, sorry. I was confused. Yeah, we might try that one today as well, but let's stick with the... Um... I didn't follow up with this yet. I will contact the organizers for the Sustainable Urban Development competition that we, we discussed and try to find the contacts in China. Um, I'll send that email out this weekend and they can answer it on the weekdays. I just got kind of carried away this week. All right, what are we doing? This one. Yep. Yeah, it sounds like a pretty cool way to uh, open some doors and get connected and they might have, you know, internships and other things and scholarships and stuff like that uh, that could open like a career path or a life journey, you know, just by putting yourself out there, by having the, you know, confidence to step up and reach out to people. <laughs> okay, so uh, we will call this uh, or, um, design pattern images. And we'll make sure it's coming from the um, origin master. But they look like they're on the same. Oh, okay. Oh, no. It's not that one. It's... Aha! Here it is. All right. Okay, it's a little bit faster there for you now. You could do a test.
I'm gonna do a test real quick. Way faster. Yeah. All right, so ready? I'll just do one more test. One, two, three, go. Pretty close. Start. <laughs> Cool. All right, so I'm just going to close this sidebar, though, and I will need to open it up in a second, but let's open the, um, I think it's just the wagtail, your first wagtail side, even. And we should now be in the 2.9 docs. I kind of wish projects wouldn't do this, or if they would have a latest and just always have the latest resolving there. Um, several open source projects do that. I understand they want to keep versions of the documentation that's relevant to older versions. Yep, see you in a minute, Max. Um, but the problem is when every time I get a top search result, the top like two, in fact, they're for the old version. It's significantly old versions, so yeah, it's unfortunate. All right, so we're going to open the model for sustainable Oopsie daisy. for patterns app models. There we go. And how do I, now this I should be able to split like that. Just you can't split the terminal thing. Or that way. We're on it too. So first we need to enhance the model by adding a field. And what we're after is this kind of a gallery feature right here. We have a photo gallery. You just upload arbitrary number of uh, images and then render thumbnails. So what we've got, it's basically a many-to-many -many or one-to-many -many relationship, I suppose, in this case. Unless, mm, yeah, so one urban design pattern can have many images. So the urban design pattern and the images live in different database tables. And in fact, we're inheriting from um, sort of or referencing the Wagtail images image model. And whoops, let me get down here and make sure. Any of Max's uh, messages. So this is like a join table. And in fact, I think this would support a many to many type relationship because it's huh, would allow one page to have many images but through many instances of this. Except the fact that the image, if it gets deleted, it's going to delete this link, which is okay. Anyway, I don't want to overthink it. So let's go ahead with our model and add urban design pattern image. Yeah, blast. Now this order book class though is pretty cool, in my opinion. It's I've also heard uh, red detractor, detractors, you know, everybody's, everything's got trade-offs, nothing's perfect, but uh, it's going to allow us a nice user interface to add multiple images to um, an urban design pattern and then set the order. So if we want to control the gallery order, uh, which image should be the primary one or something like that. And we're not adding a featured image, though. That's another cool thing. Essentially, I guess if we're going to have a uh, on the urban design pattern index page, we might have like a um, a grid of images. I, I don't like the um, masonry. I think it, masonry design makes things really difficult to read. You can't really scan horizontally. You, you have to jump up and down uh, in order to kind of read things. So 
it would be a static grid in our case, and Wagtail does do um, square image cropping. This There's also a feature built into Wagtail so that when it does crop an image that has a different aspect ratio, it'll preserve a point of interest. You designate what's the interesting thing in that image. So from the Wagtail core models, we want to import the page and the orderable models. And here we're inheriting from order above, and essentially, I'm going to copy and paste, don't, don't get mad at me. Yeah, because it's even got a caption, that's pretty cool, and the caption should double as alt text. So it should, I think it should be required. Alt text should be at least required. We'll just change the variable names here. Copy and paste coding. Just do so mindfully. So instead of li linking to a page, we're linking to a page, but it's called a design pattern. This gets a little bit redundant because we're going to have this class, urban design pattern image, that's a kind of a join of those two ideas. And so from the urban design um, pattern image object, you'll be able to get to the urban design pattern and the image. <laughs> it's just in between them. All right, so the printle key is urban design pattern, and here, I wonder if black would help us a little bit. And they're telling us to be a little bit careful of this cascading delete. Um, so I'll have to think about it for a moment, but let's look at the related name. What this does is essentially from any design pattern, we can say, get us the gallery images, and that'll get us all these urban design pattern image instances. And we can iterate through those and get the image so we can kind of reach into the images. And if we wanted, we could actually just um, make a helper function that uh, gets us the image like metadata or something in a more convenient way. We'll come to that if we need to. Um, this is just a generic if we don't think we'll be traversing from an image to urban design patterns. We could do that, but we might we might want to. Now this begs the or brings up an interesting point that one image could feature multiple design patterns, and in that case, it could be used in multiple uh, instances. So in this case, hmm. Uh, but what's going to happen is if we delete the image. It's going to cascadingly delete this urban design pattern image. And if the design pattern gets deleted, it's going to cascadingly delete this and any urban design pattern images. So I think what they're warning about is like if you have a staff page that has a gallery embedded and you delete one image in that staff page, you don't want this um, or I understand then <laughs> the the caution. The gallery entry is deleted, but it shouldn't delete the design pattern. If we delete the image, it'll just delete the gallery entry. back max all right so yeah this looks pretty good then um, and in caption I I think we'll make it required and use it for the alt text Maybe it's a little bit 
uh, I don't know if unconventional, but inappropriate to mix cap the notion of captions and alt text because they can differ. But generally what we're trying to do is always have an alt text and perhaps display a caption. The alt text has a caption on the images. So I don't know if I should just call it alt text, which is sort of a web design um, concept. And I'm trying to also be aware of the idea that the implementation leaking into the abstraction. In other words, the implementation of the internet and accessibility on the internet ally, um, having this alt text idea, leaking into an idea, the abstraction we're trying to do is a gallery of photos and galleries have captions. That's the more common thing. So I think we can meet both needs. Uh, we will be providing alt text, but we'll not be um, using that implementation detail in the kind of data model, except as a help text. There we go. All right, and then so we'll choose an image and add the caption in line. And then I think we just need one more change here. Gallery images, inline panel. So let's make sure we've got this inline panel. Add the image chooser panel. From the edit handlers, image chooser panel. And from, oh, I gotta be careful here. That's the wrong one. So I need the inline panel there, not the image chooser panel. And image chooser panel comes from Wagtail images at hand. This is why I'm saying when you're copying and pasting code, it's danger zone, danger zone time. Um, mom, 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 mom. Index. And what are we using for the, the environment manager? Just pip. And what do we do? What do we do now? See. Yep. Uh, make migrations. Oh, dag nab. Copy and paste there. Missing comma. Oh, because I deleted the, yeah, it's not so much a copy and paste error. I deleted the optional thing and I got the comma with it. All right, Max, where are you at? Also, did I read the email? Um, actually, I haven't even checked my email today. I usually do. I check it a couple of times a day. And surprisingly, uh, it's supposed to come to my phone. I've checked it on my phone today. Let me double check this, Max. Hopefully, I don't dox some people. Jeez, I wish I could control what uh, window things open on. Okay, it's all just nothing personal. Oh, I don't, I don't see it here. Let me... No, what email did you send it to? Whisper it to me. Strange. Yep, yeah, by the way, this is on the stream. So, I don't know. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, uh, I did not receive it. Whisper it to me the email address to which you sent it. Um, I, I don't have it. 
a super user, do I? I did it just create this DB SQL SQLite database? CMS site. Oh, now I'm just having troubles. Just having troubles paying attention to details. All right, now if we create a new design pattern, we have to have the. Oh, that's funny that. Urban design patterns can just live at the top level. Well, anyway, let's check it out. So, roundabout. And hmm. Okay. So it looks like the uh, images did not, did not, did not, did not appear. So I missed something. I can publish it. No problem. Okay, no, I got my imports and I just didn't add the inline panel for the gallery images. That's all. Just missing the detail. Attention to details. So now we go back to the urban design pattern. So we have the image and the pattern, and we added a new field. I'm mixing quotes even in the same line. How dare you! I know people prefer single quotes, and Python doesn't really care. Yay, add gallery image. Um, we'll upload an image. That's uh, something. Hmm. Per programming. Here's, here's a nice photo from Code Buddies. Code Buddies. Code Buddies. Yay! Now if we view it live, we don't have the image gallery. So let's do the next copy and pasting. Copy and paste. No, 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 no. Ooh, this would be nice. Get parent URL re to return back to um, the pattern index. Ah, uh, yeah, the Tux family email, uh, it's not even forwarding to my, yeah, I don't use that anymore. Unfortunately, I have to take that off my GitHub. For a while, I kind of had it forwarding, um, uh, to another email, to another email, and it, it was just getting hit by a bunch of spam. So, yep, that's why I didn't get the message. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. Let's uh, do a little bit of research on the options. Go ahead and create an issue for that, Max, on GitHub, because this is something we should talk about transparently. And then we can um, discuss what the options are and how to get it started. Cool beans. Thanks for the suggestion. Um, just uh, anybody else on the stream? Yeah, there's one other person. So Max is uh, suggesting that we start like a fundraising type um, financing page for this project so that we might get some backers and we can continue the development in an open fashion. And there's a few um, platforms that provide those services. Uh, GoFundMe and Kickstarter are the ones Max uh, su uh, suggested off the top of his head. 
uh, of the for the first ideas. There's another one I'm trying to remember. Oh, open collective. We might think about this one. And this one kind of cool. It makes your community sustainable, particularly when we start incurring expenses for this project, because I'm going to need to set up a virtual private server to deploy it and run it. And then people will, you know, we'll want to keep it online. So it's going to be persistent. And if we start adding patterns to the pattern library and stuff, it's going to be a resource we don't want to go offline. So this might be a cool one too. Have you, have you checked out Open Collective Max? And I'll put this in the um, Twitch chat just so it comes up on the stream as well as being here. But uh, anybody else watching? So yeah, it uh, lets you t receive donations. And um, your community can manage those donations, so it's not just one person. A lot of times, you know, I'll see open source projects with a PayPal link to their, you know, core developer or something like that. Um, and this is cool budget tracking, so you can show people how the money is being spent. So, like, let's say we have a $10 a month DigitalOcean virtual private server, and we have $20 a month in incoming donations. You know, we can say, well, here we're spending 10 a month on this, and then we're spending another 10 a month on, oh, I don't know, green tea. That would be a good one. Is green tea a budgetable expense? All right, so there we go. Good idea. And the key word here is sustainability, right? You just want not only for your urban environments to be sustainable, but your projects, your initiative to be sustainable. All right, well, depends what was that on in response to cool now i pasted some code oh on green tea if it's a <laughs> if it's a budgetable expense or not yeah for if it's just going to my personal green tea budget it's probably not very fair but if everybody has their own tea or coffee budget hey, it might be good might be justifiable so now we're going to just edit our template for the individual design pattern and i will make this change um, to only allow urban design patterns to be defined under the urban design patterns index. And you'll see why. You'll see the implications of that in a moment. Oh, now it's opening things in the live share chat side of the deal. Oh, probably because I had focus there last time. Uh, let's. Should we put the tags at the bottom? They're probably not as cool. That's not what I'm trying to paste. They're probably not as cool as the images. Now, Max, I'm going to leave this kind of ugly looking. Or just as the default. I'm not trying to say the defaults are ugly, but it's very plain. And it may or may not work uh, with six or seven or more images or whatever. I don't know how it will look. So if you want to um, create a follow-up item and just mess around with the design aspect of this, that would be cool too. I'm just going to try to get the feature out the door. And oof, ouch. Now I gotta read, see this is the perils of copy and paste code. You need these wagtail images tags. Thankfully, thankfully I've um, made these mistakes. Learn from my mistakes. Nice, okay, so there's a problem already. Whee! Hmm. Hey, what's up, Voimar? How you doing? If if item if page gallery, yeah. So we have do this. If page gallery images all. So if there are some gallery images, then do this. Images. All right, and there we go. Any updates on the OpenStreetMap issue? Nope, we don't. We haven't been working on that. Lost link to the repo. Repo is under the. Uh, 
video. It's always there. But if you don't type it, here it is. The OpenStreetMap issue, yeah, so the initial issue there is just to do queries. That one is still up for grabs. Where is that? Are you interested in taking that? Here it is. This is help wanted. It's a good first issue. If you'd like to take that, just go ahead and comment on the issue and uh, we'll be here to help as well. I'm checking GitHub all the time, especially during weekdays. I'm on GitHub all day. It's part of my work. And on the weekends, increasingly, mm, when I'm doing live code sessions, for example, I'll be checking it. Yeah, cool. And there's probably tutorials on it, too. Uh, if the OpenStreetMap docs are a little bit um, kind of dense or um, developer-oriented. Yeah. So either Max or me will probably catch any questions or comments that you add to this issue. Max or I, I suppose. That's right. All right. It's so low, 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 low. Hmm. I think the float is part of the problem. And then... I can't remember if that's... There's a bootstrap class for this. And we probably want an image card here or something like that. Let's just double check. Because we don't want to lose the divness. The div is a block element, right? So five, five. Yeah, there we go. So the floating is what kind of broke the blockiness of the div. Now, block element versus inline element. And then I don't even know if we need this class, to be honest. I think if I add another image, then we might see them smooshing each other, smooshing up. Well, so let's, and you can see also the cool, um, how the cool orderable works. Actually, I just changed, choose the same image twice. How about that? And I can say, well, actually, I like this code buddies better than that code buddies. And that might be also where, uh, I don't know, you get in a little bit of danger of the cascading delete if other things are using the same image, but not in this case. My goodness. I may have discovered a bug. When I duplicated it, the code buddy's text was inquired, in fact, there. And I need to also use that as alt text. Ah, so there we go. That's why they're floating it. So, yes, yes, yes. Oh, no. How do we do alt text in... Too many things at once. I need to do all text first. So when we're using the image tag, we want to pop that all text in there. And the focal area is kind of cool. Look at this: 1.7, 1.63, 1.1, 1.3. This is ridiculous. This is because the project is using versioned um, documentation and Google's just indexing and everything, everything, and they don't have just like a latest, that's always the latest. That would be the ideal situation here. So you just always have to click twice. It's a minor nuisance. I should just be able to add alt. I actually didn't check if there's alt in there. But I don't know where it would... Uh, it's getting the alternate file name. So that's not super useful. Um, yeah, maybe... Or about the um, vanishing um, caption text. Sometimes i got to think of the threshold of effort required to make that um, issue and probably 
even reproduce it versus just um, the inconvenience of that. I don't think it's worth it right now. <laughs> I do, though, try to open issues, but there's always a trade-off because taking issue, adding issues takes time, and it just pulls you away from things. And I already have scatterbrain focus. Uh, you can see I'm trying to do alt text. Oops, sorry. Both I'm trying to do alt text and then the gallery layout at the same time. I'm going to forget one of those. One moment, let me adjust my mic. So I just got to carry on with the alt text. And I think if I just put alt in there, it should take mine. I'm going to just try that. It should just take whatever I put for alt. Testing one, two, three. Yeah, that works. Great. Um, so that's cool. You know, this is a good example of design by convention and just al aligning with the way things work and not kind of, you know, even when you have to invent your own sort of tag system, um, it still respects HTML. So what we want there is actually the alt equals um, image dot caption. Uh, oh, of course. I think this should work. Now I'm going to be surprised if it doesn't actually. No, I won't because Is there a way to specify the alt field in the image? You can set the relevant alt in this way. Can I just use caption? Now this is guessing code. This is almost as bad as copy and paste code. Just have to do it this way. Here we go, actors. It looks like uh, the most straightforward uh, solution here. Just checking out for Max's got any suggestions. Check the Wagtail chat, uh, and the Twitch chat. It's just to do the copy and paste of this for standard image tag here. Just take a look at it. All right, so the first thing, goodness. Well, I should have been able to fix that more easily. But uh, okay, so we got a source attribute, which is just going to get the image URL. Then we got the width, uh, which should be the width, um, image. Uh, okay, so I kind of like these helpers though. But um, because I think Wagtail will even you know scale these. If you do a square, it'll it'll do some nice cropping. And if I would have defined an alt property on the image, it might have just picked that up. You know, if I again about talking about following conventions. 
bet there's a convention in there that I just didn't follow. In the Wagtail Images image model. self-image title oh what if I just actually what if I just do this um, if I define the alt um, maybe this is the best way to do it can't override it here because I'm in no I'm not actually defining my own type of image model so that won't work but also it looks like if instead of um, caption I would have said alt this would be no problem going to have the alt text in there just as a principle we should be doing that okay that's going to format that for me one second so if I delete this content, it should let me do that without complaint. And since we have a cascading delete, then that should be possible. All right, so we're just rolling back the changes. The migration didn't take effects, effects running the server. Oh, shoot. My stream delay is lower than normal. That's good. I'm streaming at 3,000 kilobits a second. But I haven't tweaked any of the settings. I've been trying to keep the bandwidth pretty low as possible. I should have a really low audio um, sample rates and kind of low video, but I just want the text on screen to be legible, so that's the main thing. So, I actually just want one server. And, uh, you know, the code text, is it pretty visible? I suppose it would be. I haven't had any complaints, at least. And I do check them out on YouTube when I upload them, so. Okay, this, we're done here. Okay, hey, what's up, Tatsuo? Yeah. Yeen. Tatsuo Yeen. Is that? <laughs> See, I'm talking about small text. <laughs> I can't even read. Yo, yo. I can't even read the Twitch chat. Alrighty then. So I should be able to now make that migration. Oh, it's noticing it's required. And it's, since I've created the table in the database. And I don't know what really to set as the default value for a foreign key relationship, so let's just go ahead and delete the date to base. Which means I'll just create a new super user 
And it also means we can roll back some of those migrations, the redundant ones, just to see. We're in patterns, migrations. Um, I haven't committed them. Ah, I need to put the media directory under git ignore. Nikes. It's using your internal. Uh, Max, it's using your internal uh, email. I can blur that out in the video. Just makes it a little bit longer to uh, publish. There's always these little gotchas, gotta worry about doxing. Uh, yeah, but um, okay. <laughs> Alright, so now what was I gonna do? Okay, I'll delete this. Migration five, because patterns, migrations, F pattern four was uh, adding the index page, and five is adding the image with the caption. And I couldn't add this sixth migration, which added the rename caption to alt. So if I delete this migration, since I've not committed it and I've reset the database, now if I make migrations, it's gonna kind of see that as a new table altogether and it shouldn't complain about the default. I'll have to figure out what's the appropriate the appropriate way to set those defaults. But now I'm, I'm going with conventions, I'm using the alt. Um, uh, migrate. Yeah, it's, I think Wagtail, smooths over even some, you know, Django's been pretty good to work with from my experience, limited, uh, I've only been doing it for about a year. Um, you know, it's very well documented, but yeah, I think Wagtail even makes it a little more smoother learning curve there too, uh, which is pluses and minuses. It's good because you can do things fast, but then when you do need to get down a little bit lower level, then you you got the learning curve again. So it's, you're gonna hit the learning curve eventually, it just kind of de delays it. <laughs> Yeah, Gasman is awesome. You saw how, how much karma he had? It was like 14k. Really cool, dude. All right, so now I need to create a super user. Mm -hmm. And my super secret. Oh. Uh, local testing password. Yeah, it's fairly common. Okay. Yeah, and that's, yeah, again, the both Wagtail and the Django docs are just superb. And what they do is just really excellent. Like the scope of the project, they're truly going to provide you a, a huge and functional foundation to do many types of projects, even real time chat projects and things like that. We're in a content management space. So Wagtail is serving us really well. We have some features on the roadmap that are going to be more um, kind of interactive mapping, uh, and Wagtail is not going to be so good of a fit for that. And um, we'll be probably just at that point needing to do a lot more JavaScript for the user interface part. But we'll be using Django uh, a lot on the back end, and we might bring in some other back end services. So here we go. Now I can run server. And uh, we'll have to learn to make those remote API calls through the Django API, kind of like proxying the calls in some way. Now, if we refresh, I should be able to log in. And we'll have no content. <clears throat> and if I add a page, and just you can add Urban Design uh, indexes anywhere, test. And I want this, some description, testing, image, caption. Uh, the 
alt text that is to be code buddies. Or, that was an okay one. These work. If it had just lined up things with conventions, and that's one of the takeaways with working with Django and Wagtail in general, the more you just follow the conventions, the smoother your work is. Don't fight the framework. Otherwise, you'll just need to be in a micro framework where you can define your own framework, and then eventually you'll have to fight your own framework. So you're often going to be fighting some set of conventions and structural patterns and projects that's you know not going to go away. All right, so we've got that. Ooh, look at that. It's really small. I think that's supposed to be like that. Go, though. Uh, uh, so inspect. And I got to just go back to my template code. And I think we can roll back now to just using the one-liner. And we don't have the item caption anymore. Let's get rid of that. Now let's see what happens. Okay. Ah! It's still using the title. Of course it's going to use the title. Because it's a property. Hmm. Oh, man, this is pain. You got any ideas, Mac? You can, Max. You can take away, take it away. I'm going to um, open a feature request for this, or I'll open a Stack Overflow question for it first. Hey, what's up? How you doing there, Linear DSB? All right, cool. Thanks, Max. Yeah, if you got some ideas, go for it. I'll hop over to Stack Overflow. Uh, ask a question. So yeah, it's either going to be a place to do it in the template code. Yeah, and this is nice that it'll search. Are wagtail though. This is definitely wagtail. This, this. Mm, they said a custom image model. That's what I was kind of hoping to avoid. And really, Wagtail lately has been putting a lot of emphasis on accessibility, and particularly in the admin. So I think this is an oversight. But uh, all right. Well, let's define our own custom image model. Then we can use the property the alt property to return whichever field we think is appropriate. No problem. All right, Max, what are you up to? Are you doing some code? Yeah, dang custom model. model. I hate having to customize things. No, uh, it won't be too bad. But yeah, you can see there's an answer there. 
I like just. I'll just not create that issue. Following tutorials is nice and copy and paste code, but yeah, eventually you gotta just write the code to meet to specific needs. And I don't think all text is too specific to this project. Dang it. Dang nabbit. All right, so we're going to just inherit from image and it's kind of ridiculous because we already have this urban design pattern image class and um, this is a feature request this is a feature request uh, wait a minute though I can't because it's we're not really inheriting from or referencing. We're just re referencing a, re a foreign key, basically a, a, a model via a foreign key. Uh, so there's not really any way to pass context into this and to tell it to use the alt field. That's the problem. That's the problem. And it just seems like. Yeah, we we fought with that, didn't we? The Django user email. So we actually wanted just the email, or did we? I can't remember if we kept the username and the email. <laughs> but yeah, you always need to override the user model, don't you? Okay, so I'm I'm kind of teetering between two approaches here. Let me know what you think, Max. Just do the um, image tag markup here and just say forget it or kind of mess around with the custom image model. And the more, the more I think about it, it just seems like the image tag is going to be better. We just lose a couple of things like having Wagtail generate thumbnails for us and stuff. Hmm. Oh yeah, username and email. Yeah, that's right, because I think we were Anticipating having some social features that people might want to reference one another or something like that. Say, hey, check this out. Do a cut. You, okay, so you're going custom model. Okay, and do you think there's going to be a reason to make this model more generic than the design patterns? Am I prematurely optimizing it, or should I just define it as a model in the um, urban design pattern? And this is kind of ridiculous, but okay, well, here we go. It's going to confuse people when they read this code. <laughs> kind of see what I'm getting at? It's just like, what the... Uh... And if this is the case, then we would want to actually define this in a more gener generic place. I don't know what other content types we'll have, though. So then we got something like this custom design pattern image model, which is okay. And it's inheriting from image, so all we want is just this alt. Uh, but are we running into the same problem? The the image itself, this custom image model, is not going to have access to properties up here. That's the deal. So this won't work anyway. Just gotta. This stuff is really difficult to think about. I don't know if it's just me, but yeah, and maybe I'm just tired as well. So I like that. Let's let's. Um, Let's just look a little bit more closely. So essentially for each of these, when we're iterating over these in the template, we have properties. We have access to the image and all of its sub-properties, and we have this alt text here. The alt text is not a, a, a property of the image, and I think that's what I was doing wrong, so this is my mistake. Um, so I think we can come back. Ooh. 
Ooh, look at this. This is cool. We can still use that template helper if we want to use Wagtail to automatically generate our thumbnails and, and keep the uh, point of interest in there. Um, so, permit me to make some more mistakes, but I'm, I'm kind of grokking it now. I'm kind of grokking it. So when we do this, you're, we're like naming it as we get a variable in the co in the scope, then in the template scope. Uh, let's just call this um, image image. Well, firstly, so we got for image and page gallery images all. Then we got. A lot of images going on here, but um, we're going to fill the space. So that means if it's smaller than this, uh, 320 by 248 is going to make it bigger. And then we're getting um, a local variable that we can then reference. And what do you think? Should we use the picture tag? How does that work? And that'll let us have a caption, right? Let's learn a little bit more. I think this is HTML5 something. When did the picture tag become part of the HTML spec? So this is now superfluous. Then we specify this source. And maybe the alt can be specified on the source. Let's see how that works. And this is gallery. I'm getting the URL. Um, gallery image URL. Now, if anything, I can just use the uh, a regular image uh, tag. That's cool. Uh, I don't know how to use the picture tag. Maybe I'm complicating things too much. Let me see if I got any feedback from Max. Okay, cool. So you'll document the deal. Uh, but yeah, let's not actually. So that was a while ago you said that. Let's not do the alt text. Are we running the server still? Okay, so we it's not working this quite. Edit this page. We do have an image, so that's not. Gallery inspect. We we do get the div, and we do have the picture, and we even have this source set. I'm gonna view that. Can I open that in a new tab? Yes, we do have the image too. Okay, so everything's working here. I just don't know how this um, picture tag works. Let's look that up. So we have a source element and one image element. Ah, that's why. This is actually pretty cool. So we can make this mobile optimized. Ah, oh, man. And that's why you got the media. Very cool. Yeah, it's overkill for now, but... Hmm. It could be useful. All right. So we'll just go... We'll still have the image in context as gallery image, and we'll still want to get the URL, so we'll just do image equals, uh, we'll put that in quotes,
All right, and this is where naming things is getting going to be a little bit important because the gallery image is referring to an actual image. Whereas the image is now referring to the actual image. I hope you're following along because I'm barely keeping up. But I think this is going to work. Basically, the gallery image is the sort of the that join table. instance that connects the page and the image and then from there we can traverse into so from the gallery image we can traverse into the image property and just grab that here as a named variable and the reason we did this all was so that we could have at Wagtail Auto generate a thumbnail. But maybe it's a good middle ground. And it worked. Any comments? Any comments? Am I? Yeah. All right. And the inspected. All text. All text worked. Because. The only other problem, though, is the alt text is not following the image itself. Really, the alt text should be defined here, I, th I think, which comes back to the focal point. Max, I'm going crazy. And this should just be a, f a core feature of Wagtail. Images should have a <laughs> an alt text. <laughs> I'm not going crazy. I'm already crazy, but... Yeah. I'm just kind of going in circles and I just want to move forward. Oh, and somebody left the session. Okay. Max, did you disconnect? All right, cool. No worries. Um, I'm going to go with the current implementation. We're already one and a half hours into this session. I just want to have something done. I'm going to open a Wagtail feature request, though. This is a feature request. Get some tea in my belly. So first thing we do, and I did actually start on Stack Overflow, and I've gone back and forth, but you can kind of see, I hope the, that you can see at least the justification of why I believe this alt text should be a core feature of Wagtail, and we shouldn't have to kind of define our own custom uh, image model just to provide alt text. It doesn't have to be a required field, but it should it it should live on the image itself. Um, if I put the alt text on this model in between um, the urban design pattern and the image right here, um, the alt text is only ever going to be available in this context, it's meaning if we reuse that image on a different page or for a different reason, you'll have to define the alt text again, which may be desirable. And in fact, this is the implementation I'm going to go with today. <laughs> but I'm going to open a feature request and see what the Wagtail core um, team think about it. And it might even be something we could work on. I haven't really contributed much to Wagtail. So we, maybe we could explore um, how to add a new field to a core Wagtail model in a different uh, a different live coding session. It, but again, this needs to go on through uh, proper channels and through discussion. And it's not a Stack Overflow question. I'm really uh, confident this is a feature request. I just want to see if it's been... discussed before yeah 
and it's been reported. This is even had a pull request against it, and recently. Yeah, oh, actually, this is a good point, too. If the image tag itself... allowed for an alt arg argument, which it does, but to pass a property in there, which maybe it does... then maybe this is all for... Um, just a big fool's errand. Because I could have had a fundamental mistake. Instead of saying this as an image, this image tag will actually render it. Uh, the reason this won't work, though. I can't use the Django tags, but this might work right here. clean up a little bit my teacup is overflowing and the fewer tabs I have it helps me declutter here all right I thought we had to open this if I actually view it live that'll do that's where I'm trying to go and we inspect that hey it worked okay so this whole 30 minutes or so uh, was my error, uh, not knowing how to do things. Maybe it's also not very well documented. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thanks, Max. Thanks for the affirmation there. Great. So no, no problem. I just, I had the wrong property from the very beginning. I think I was trying to do gallery image dot image dot alt, which the alt was on the gallery image, not the sub image. And then I was trying to use Django, um, String interpolation tags, those mustache tags, which you can't do. You can't use mustache tags inside of here. So, again, both of these are chalk them up to naivety or inexperience with Django and Wagtail. Even though I've been using Wagtail for about a year now, a little over a year, there's so much, you know, to learn. These systems are quite um, mature and very spacious. There's a lot to them. So, yeah. Now I feel better about this task, aside from the fact that the alt tag doesn't live on the image, and maybe we'll see why. Why it was closed. Hey, what's up, Imperium? You made a song in about computer science? That's pretty cool. <laughs> Is it something you can share? Are the, uh, the lyrics appropriate for a family-friendly channel? All right, I'll come back to this. I'm going to lay this whole alt tag thing down. Intuitively, I believe it would be really nice just to have an alt text field here on the... Uh... I'm going to open the issue. Heck, if they close it, they close it. That's fine. But if they say it's cool, maybe, again, maybe we could work on it. <laughs> it's family friendly? Okay, cool. Let's check it out. You got a link to it? Is it online or what's the deal?
I'm going to reference this. But I'm going to create a new one. Uh, feature request. Yep, I got it. SoundCloud. CompSci Live. Anyone wants to check that out, feel free. I, I don't really do music and uh, audio on the stream because of DMCA crap. <laughs> so I just don't. It's kind of a pain the way copyright is evolving. Uh, but let me think. So I'm going to open this issue. Wagtail, 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 wagtail. Fifty-two ninety-one. And of course, just a screenshot. Print screen, print screen. Level two, welcome. Haven't seen you in a while. Goodness, hope I didn't. Yeah. Everything is appearing on my secondary screen.
seems um, counterproductive. What's better? What's a better word than strange? Is there a better synonym than strange? Maybe I can just do this with the, the geeky advanced correction mode. Yeah, it is a strange string, isn't a string uh, sentence? Well, it's default. That's a good one. Into, it's a good one. It's a good one. Yeah, but I'm not going to fight passive voice right now. It seems. Uh, okay, thanks. Uh, Level two and Max for taking on the discussion here. All right, you going to start your own stream there, Max? It seems. Uh, We got a feature request. Just gonna be test stream. All right, cool. Yeah, um, I'm gonna need to subscribe to you too because I haven't uh, haven't seen your stream. We'll see. Um, I don't know. If, I guess we can uh, link this issue essentially to the one we're implementing now. Just so we have a thread there. Okay, cool. Yeah, well, let me know in advance if you're going to stream, and I'll, I'll try to hop over there, too. But, uh, yeah, let's try to wrap this one up. My live stream has gone on for a while. We're almost at two hours, one hour, 42 minutes. We've got some pretty good progress. Uh, essentially, we've uh, done what we set out to do. The main thing is, um, do we need to tweak the gallery layout at all? Um, alt text is working. That's important. That's a big win. And let's edit this page and just check out adding new image what it's going to do is add it below the current image if i just reuse this one okay so maybe i was mistaken earlier it doesn't include the alt text by default i think something i got confused so again <laughs> user error this is common i'm sure you all suffer from the same uh, issues we're human we make mistakes all right now if we view it live and close the tab so they're appearing below each other instead of in line. Um, that might be okay. It might not be worth uh, really fighting with, although, because they're block elements. Let's see if there's a simple bootstrap tag there. Yeah, if there's any suggestions on the, on the image gallery. Man, Max, this uh, chat on the Visual Studio Code is fast, but it doesn't scroll, so I keep missing your messages. Mm. We're not using the Material Design Bootstrap. I don't want to hold. Let's 
see if there's a boot snip example. Yeah, they're using floats here. That round is kind of nice. Margin X auto. Alright, so you're gonna gonna go test that stream out now, Max. That might be the HTML here. Ah, so defining specific columns. Yeah, I'm not gonna mess with this right now. I'll create a follow-up issue to um, improve the gallery layout. I'll, I'll just need to research this. I want to find one that's just really simple and clean, not a lot of markup, uh, not fighting. We're defining a specific number of columns. We don't know how many images will be attached. Various things. This was a basic implementation. It's working and good enough for a pull request. So, Max, when you get a chance, I'm going to open a pull request, and uh, I'll appreciate your review. You did a great job reviewing the last one, uh, testing it out, and such. I'll create the issue, but not. Um, uh, I'm not gonna put it on a milestone. We'll we'll take that up whenever we decide to. So this is a follow up of 39. This is a big ask based on the screen width, if possible. Um, so it's an enhancement. If anyone would, like, would like to do some HTML work, CSS work, this is a good uh, first issue, help wanted. We're not going to put it in our milestone. We don't know when it'll be uh, really useful. So we want to get a minimum viable product deployed as soon as possible. So now that I've got the code pushed and I've got the follow-up issue, just so we don't uh, forget about it and we don't Maybe if we have a loose end, we'll at least be able to come back and tie it up, tidy it up. Uh, I'll just create this pull request and probably just do the outro for the stream. I appreciate it. We got seven people hanging in here. Max, thanks for being so active in chat. Level two, it's good to see you again. Haven't seen you in a while there. Uh, Imperium, thanks again for stopping in. If you're still here, uh, Tatsu, uh, Tatsu Ojilin. Uh, sorry for butchering your name, but yeah, thanks for the chat and uh, be good to kind of get some more of your experience and knowledge about uh, Django. Uh, Max is going to be around for a while. Lynn RDSB, thanks for stopping in. Nice to meet you. And Voimar, it's good seeing you again. I think Voimar's been uh, offline. And now, sir, up. hey, Black Tea, how are you doing? I missed that earlier. <laughs> so, yeah, we're going to take up an idea of Max's and maybe start up a um, kind of an open collective or some kind of a fundraising site for the project and the idea is that the any funds they'll help sustain the development effort of this project and they'll be distributed distributed equally among the developers who are the core contributors uh, this project is very small it's very nascent so this is kind of just more roadmap planning and sustainability planning but it's a good time to do it we uh, max and i believe this project's got good potential and is uh, 
you know, pretty timely for uh, the human species to be really investing in sustainability and sustainable urban design uh, and, and development as our population surges and our footprint on the Earth's carrying capacity and resources just surges astronomically. It's, it's just immense. Uh, and we either need to change our lifestyles really significantly and engineer environments to reduce our consumption uh, on a massive scale uh, while at the same time pursuing alternative electricity, alternative sources of energy, uh, of course, but those alternative sources of energy are not panaceas. They also have a significant environmental impact um, that needs to be looked at in the context of um, the magnitude of their impact compared to the fossil fuels. Um, it, and clearly, fossil fuels have got to go. We've got to stop. We've got to leave those in the ground. We've got to stop burning them. You know, that is not the future of uh, energy for our race. But in Alternative energies also are only going to take us so far. Lifestyle is going to be the one of the biggest factors. So yeah, it's a little bit of a uh, a little bit off topic, I understand, but it's uh, from a development uh, developer podcast, developer live stream. But it's core to the idea of this project and why we think it's so important. So we're hoping to provide a, a tool that really helps make sustainable urban design easy and accessible, and also kind of collaborative. So you can crowdsource these designs. You can look at your neighborhood, your city, and see what some of the sustainability issues are that surround you. Maybe get active in promoting some some meaningful change in your environment. So, yeah, we'd like to have you participating in the project. Um, Max, I opened the uh, pull request. You've co-authored it, and uh, I think you should still be able to review it. And, again, it's using your uh, email here, so I hope that's okay. It's just a default thing that... Um, the live share um, plugin is doing. Again, this has been a CodeBuddies.org live coding session. It's nice to meet everybody and have community. Uh, we're all kind of dealing with the social distancing in different ways, and um, CodeBuddies provides a, a really nice uh, way to interact with people uh, and collaborate and build meaningful projects. CodeBuddies is itself an open source project hosted on GitHub. It's github.com slash CodeBuddies. If you want to get involved in any of these types of open source projects, uh, be it the sustainable urban design space or the codebuddies.org, stop on by the CodeBuddies community. You know, hop on one of these hangouts and, uh, and meet the developers. There's tasks in you know both of these projects for new and experienced coders alike. And you don't have to be a coder to contribute. There's a lot of ways to contribute to these projects. Coming up with ideas, trying it out, and finding bugs, reporting bugs. If you like to do design, working with maps, um, helping with some of the business tasks, we're trying to form a small business around this idea. There's so many ways you can contribute and get involved, uh, both uh, with Code Buddies as well as the sustainable urban design space. So thank you all very much for hanging out. It's, I'll look forward to seeing you again. Have a great day or evening, wherever you are, and stay healthy out there.